Hey, what's up guys? It's Obi from the Master Box Show and I hope you're having a wonderful day. What do you guys think about a build that has godly amount of ward that's able to ignore fight mechanics and just keep on pumping the damage like a monster, decimate empowered monoliths, high corruptions, arenas, bosses, face tanking everything without a care in the world, the perfect combination of offense and defense, stacking various elements and dots, like a true master of curses while leaving a trail of enemies incinerated from your explosive fire damage because apparently heroes don't look at explosions i present to you the necro explosion warlock enjoy all right now we start off with the passives of the acolyte in order for us to effectively build the foundation of our warlock towards the mid game so we're going to start off with taking forbidden knowledge and we're going to be ranking this up up to level 5 in order for us to get at least 5 points in our intelligence as well as 25% of our necrotic resistance which is really important for the build. Next up is we'll be taking Mania of Mortality and we will just take one level of this to open up further levels for our Acolyte. So after that we'll be going back to the Forbidden Knowledge and taking the rest of the levels for this node giving us the total of plus 8 intelligence and plus 40 for our necrotic assistance. After maxing out Forbidden Knowledge, we'll be moving into Blood Aura and taking 6 levels from this node. We'll be increasing our damage by 36% as well as unlocking Unnatural Preservation and we'll be maxing this out to level 5 as early as possible. That'll make our ward retention an additional of 40% increasing our necrotic and poison resistance by 20% as well. After maxing this out, we'll now be moving back to our Blood Aura and maxing it out to level 8, giving a total of increased damage by 48% around level 20 or 22. You'll be finishing up and leveling the Acolyte class and we'll be moving into the Warlock class. Now let's talk about the Warlock class. We will just be spending points up to level 80 and leave the remaining 20 levels for your amazing creativity. In order for you to create various iterations of the build, I will be discussing the priority nodes that you will most likely take if you want to play around with this build. We are starting with the Chaos Flame and take 8 levels of this node here. This will flat out increase the damage output of our spells which are Fire and Necrotic, as well as increasing the ignite chances of our fire spells and the damn chances of our necrotic spells right after that this will be taking at least three levels of soul stealer this will give us 12 percent mana regeneration which is really nice to have especially in the early game and our effect cooldown will decrease by nine seconds right after that we will now move into take harrowing armor just to open up a node that we will be needing later on the level so we'll just take one level of harrowing armor here this will increase at least 10 armor and health to our build ward of malevolence is up next and we will be taking five levels of this this will grant us additional war decay threshold whenever we kill a target and additional two points of intelligence while we are channeling skills but most likely we won't be channeling because i prefer moving around and using curses for this build war decay threshold is increased by 75 Ward gain on kill is plus 15. After maxing out Ward of Malevolence, we'll be taking at least 
3 levels to imperishable just to trigger the point bonus war decay threshold per 1% necrotic resistance is plus 1 which is really handy to have dark protections is up next and we will be maxing this out as early as possible in order for us to gain more ward per second which is 35 we also get a 5 point bonus here we take less damage per unique curses on the target which we will be stacking up a lot with this build wither is next this is another curse that we can stack on our enemies and we'll be taking 5 levels of this granting us 100% chance on hit the 5 point bonus is really effective because we take less damage from withered enemies which is around 8%. After that we'll just take Enroaching Darkness by 1 point. This will grant us another curse that we can deal on our enemies. Next is the Infernal Lash. We will be taking at least 5 points here just to get the 65% increase in our Ignite Chance as well as the 5 point bonus which will add the Flame Whip as well as the Ignite Overload for 12 seconds when we trigger 25 combined stacks of Ignite to our enemies which we will be doing really quickly especially in this build. Ignite Overload is a 1% increased damage to all of our fire spells. After taking 5 points of Infernal Lash, we will now take Chaotic Strike and take 2 points from this node here double damage chance is two percent while the double damage chance for a curse is 0.4 percent after taking two points of chaos strike we will now take wreck havoc and maxing this out to level five this will increase our critical modifier some more which is plus four percent as well as a three point bonus which will double from our chaotic strike node which will further increase our critical modifier by 30 percent from this point you will be unlocking a curse here and we will be taking five points of this here this will increase our cast speed by 20 percent as well as our cast speed for our curses which is 25 percent what's really cool here is that we get a three point bonus Whenever we are 35% below, we cleanse every curses in a 15 meter area and we gain ward per curse cleanse. Plating Crones is up next. We will be increasing our chances to gain haste whenever we curse our target and we will be increasing this to level 5. Haste chance per kill is increased by 25% as well as increasing our haste chance whenever we hit our bosses with our curses by 25% as well. We will now go and take the remaining points of Soul Eater and increasing it up to level 5. Unholy Torment is up next and we will be increasing this to level 6. This will increase the damage of our curses by 18 and increasing its area of effect by 18%. From this point, most likely you will be around level 70 to 75 and I highly advise you take any node that increases your intelligence as all of the skills that we will be using for the build scale with the intelligence modifier. So in our case, we'll be taking Occult's Mind and maxing this out to level 8. This will also trigger a 5 point bonus. We gain additional mana per point of our intelligence which is plus 1. One, most likely around early 80s your passives will look like this this is the complete setup that you will be bringing towards the end game now let's talk about the skills your primary source of dps especially in the early game is your chthonic fisher so i highly advise you take the first node for this and drop any sort of node that you have especially in your leveling process we're starting off with the left side of the tree by taking the fragile cross just to open up our tree some more we will be reduce the mana cost of our cathodic fissure by 4 as well as refunding the mana by 6%. Right after that this will be taking fellfire just to open up the upper left tree some more. The torment that the fissure will be spreading will also spread ignite stacks in the maximum of 2 targets per hit. We're gonna keep it moving to the upper left side. We're gonna take stingent current and take 2 levels from this. This will increase the frequency of the spirit some more by 20%. With this opened up we will be able to take the of gloom and flames this will basically provide a secondary fissure but right after taking of bloom and flames we will now be focusing on the eastern side of the tree next death from below is the next one we will take one level of this to open up the tree some more in the northern eastern side of this skill pyrochasm is up next this will basically provide damage to the line radius of our cathodic fissure after opening this up, we will now be making our Chthonic Fissure into a traversal skill. We will be trailing along the Fissure. I will like using Chthonic Passage instead of other traversal skills. It has the ability to face through gaps in the map. You can traverse yourself in between areas easily with this skill. Right after completing the northern east side of this tree, we will now be setting our focus north 
can take Tomb, Gorger, and max this out to level 3. Our torment damage will increase from ignited, poison, and bleeding enemies. So that is an increase of 45%. Up next is the southern left side of the tree, which is the spirit gale. We will now increase the damage of our necrotic attacks, particularly the torment that our chthonic fisher is dishing out. We'll be taking spirit gale here just to open up the bottom tree some more. So when the enemies are tormented, spirits will inflict a another torment within 8 meters so we have a 25% chance of that to proc. We will be taking 2 levels from damned water. Spirits will now inflict the damned curse for 2 stacks. Grid tide will be added to the damage here because our cathodic fissure as well as our ailments will also deal more necrotic damage per 1% to our added critical strike modifier. Twisted Waves will be set to 3 levels. Torment deals more damage per 2% of our uncapped necrotic resistance, making it up to 3% in max level. For the final level, we will just take Severed Wards to shred necrotic resistance from my enemy by one stack. The next skill that we'll be prioritizing for this build is Spirit. Plague. This will provide us with our ignition stacks as well as our bleed chance in order for us to effectively bleed our enemies while also igniting them, which is cool. We'll start off with pestilence and taking two levels from here, opening up other nodes in this tree. This will increase our global damage over time by 10%. Right after that, this will be moving to the north and take hemorrhage for three levels here. They will be able to inflict three stacks of bleed whenever the enemy has spirit plague. After that, this will be taking exsanguination and take five points from here. This will increase the physical penetration for our bleed by 250%, also providing bleed stacks on you. What's really cool here is we will be using this in tandem for our gloves and turning all of our bleed chances into ignite chances. Once ignite is triggered on us, this will activate the effects of our belt, which will increase our spell power some more every ignite stacks that we have. Next is the plague burst. We'll be increasing the range of our plague some more and take 3 levels from here. After that, we'll be taking hindrance affliction by 1. This will open up enfeeblement, giving us the ability to inflict frailty on our enemies. Right after enfeeblement, we'll be taking the plague of eyes. This will provide more damage for our spirit plague, every intelligence that we have. After completing the western side, we will just take one level of agonizing expense. Our spirit plague will further spread with every critical in the area. So we'll just take one here. For the remaining levels, we will just take three levels of rotten to the core. So this will increase the damage further some more by 30%. The third skill that we'll be utilizing for the build is the infernal shade. We'll be opening up this tree here and take two levels of influence just to open up the node some more. Banning of the flames is up next and we'll be taking five levels of this. This will increase the damage of our infernal shade some more while increasing its area of effect by 60%. Right after maxing that out, we'll be taking blaze of shade. This will give us the chance to summon a blaze shade to deal more damage in significantly larger area, giving us 20% more chance to summon the blaze as well as increasing the blaze area by 200%. Torment beacon is up next and we'll be increasing this to 5 levels, increasing our ignite chances some more by 200%. Ignition will be our next priority. We'll be taking 3 levels here. This will increase the mana efficiency of our Infernal Shade by 21% as well as increasing its cast speed. Moving to the left side, we'll be taking 3 levels of Wildfires here. This will further increase the damage of our Infernal Shade by 54% and will also be a gateway to take the combustion. This will be the final node that we'll be taking. Basically, it will grant the ability for the Infernal Shade to explode, dealing heaps amount of fire damage to our enemies. That being said, most likely Infernal Shade's abilities will look like this and you will be bringing this from the mid game to the late game. The fourth skill that we'll be prioritizing is the Bone Curse. This will further increase our survivability and prepare the build for the late game. We'll start off by taking 3 levels of Conflation here, giving us an additional area of 90% for our Bone Curse. 
we need to prioritize in taking the southern side of the bone curse tree because of the bone prison node so what's really cool here is that bone prison is a summon that you set around the target trapping enemies inside while also providing the bone curse effect on them bone prison is considered a minion so its base hp is around 500 and we will be using this as a foundation to get ridiculously high ward later on our levels after that this will be taking the shattered prison this will reduce the cooldown of our bone curse by 70 percent after taking shattered prison we will also be maxing out ossify here this will further increase the hp of our bone prison by 2500 what's amazing here is this will synergize really well with our final spell later on our build the foul defense is up next just to be a gateway to unlock loven flesh this will increase our bleed chance some more and maxing this out to 75 percent here right after that this will be taking iron maiden for us to scale our bone curse damage and increasing it up to 20 percent just to open up the final two points in brittle bones our bone curse has the capability to insta kill any enemies that is below its threshold so we'll be increasing it onto two levels meaning that the threshold is eight percent of the hp of the enemies as well as increasing its damage by eight percent your setup will most likely look like this from the mid game going into the late game finally the secret sauce of the build and the reason that this build is ridiculously op which is the profane veil this spell is just insane because it literally gives you the ability to forget about boss mechanics and fight mechanics whenever you are in the profane veil form we'll be starting off with eternal blasphemy and taking two points from here just to open up the southern right side of the nodes this will provide our duration by 14 percent while also increasing our move speed by 14 percent we'll be taking vampiric pool as early as possible taking this up to max level this is the reason that why we increase the hp of our bone curse because again Bone Curse is now considered a minion, so Vampiric Pool is able to consume those minions, grant that to our ward. The HP of each Bone Prison is 2500, and we can consume 10 minions in a single Profane Veil duration, which is insane. The possibility of increasing your ward is just exponential if ever you just increase the HP of your minions some more, while consuming them with the use of our Profane Veil. After taking Vampiric Pool, we will now be moving to the western side and take this courage this will provide slow chance by 50 percent whenever we are in profane well as well as leech by 0.5 percent this will open up scorn and we'll be taking two levels from this stream of profanity will be up next we can reduce the cooldown of our profane veil with every curse that we cast while the profane veil is in cooldowns after completing the western side we will now prioritize in the north and take loose tongue here this will just reduce the mana cost by five and this will open up the penitent tangent we will be able to inflict penance to our enemies which is a curse that will basically inflict more fire damage to targets by one percent remaining points will go to spirit plate this will add our damage reduction from our armor to our profane veil rounding out eternal blasphemy here just to increase the duration by 21 percent as for the final one is we'll just take scorn here just to increase the damage per curse that we have and that's it for the skills that you'll be bringing from the mid game to the late game just to summarize everything you will be taking fisher spirit plague infernal shade bone curse as well as profane veil for your end game build now let's talk about the gear all of the gear that i have here is not perfect yet i'm still in the process of finding better gear especially for the legendaries if you are now farming the monoliths most likely your gear will look like this for our necro combustion build most of the gear that i'll be mentioning are easily acquired in the bazaar provided that you have the gold to acquire these items here there are three items especially in your leveling process that i highly advise you take as quickly as possible starting with the millions hubris this will increase our fire damage over time as well as providing some intelligence but the most unique thing about this gauntlet is that it converts 100 percent of your bleed chance to ignite chance giving you more chance chances to proc that sweet ignite while you proc that ignite i highly advise you take emulator's oblation this is somewhat of an expensive and rare item that you might find i highly advise you taking this whenever you can this has a chance for you to ignite yourself 
when we are using our fire and necrotic skills which translates to all of our skills basically while we are ignited this will increase the spell damage of our fire and necrotic skills up to 40 stacks we'll be proccing this most of the time for us to increase our spell damage to the utmost limit of this item for the third one is the blown counter barbet i really like this headpiece because it gives a lot of intelligence as well as some really nice necrotic resistance and the most notable thing here is the ward per second per 3% uncapped necrotic resistance here. This will provide you scaling ward if ever you increase your necrotic resistance some more. Some other gear that you might want to get throughout your leveling process and your mid game journey is the Mad Lad Alchemist Ladder just to provide all of the damage over time spells that you might stack up to your enemies while you are cursing them to death. The other one is the Twisted Heart. Most likely you will be able to use this around level 80. It provides 7% current health converted to the reward when we are using necrotic spells or any sort of elemental spells that we have. For our offhand I highly advise you take the combination of our bleed stack and use those to your advantage with the help of the flayer's pride i really like this shield because of the bleed chance on hit that it adds up that will also translate to our ignite chance not to mention the additional stacking intelligence that we might have from this really good unique for the boots is the blood of the exile increasing our bleed duration while also providing really good base stats for our warlock for the rings and amulets, you might want to get the Ashes of Mortality. This is a really nice ring to have. 15 chance to hit on gain ward per ignite or damn targets. 30 ward per ignite and damn on us. Every time we stack up the ignite on us, we will be getting more ward in return. And for the final one, the Soul Gambrus Fallacy is a nice one to have. Provide more critical chances for us as well as ward per gain crit. Now it's time to showcase our Necro Combustion Warlock skills and see what it can do. I'm just going to be explaining to you guys how quickly we can utilize the power of this build and how it generally works. So yeah, on small groups of enemies like this, you can actually just use Spirit Blade and just spread as much of that if you want. That will basically burn them down and destroy them and spread as much damage of those. You can just spread Spirit Plague, use the Thonic Fissure drop the bone curse and then run around using your profane bell get as much ward stacks as you can rinse and repeat use spirit plague activate our um infernal shade let the enemies combust and then after that use um a fissure pressure take open bell refresh the stacks and then use it again rinse and repeat that is basically how it works. Spirit Plague, Internal Shade, drop the Bone Curse, whatever you want, just to get some ward. Activate the Tony Fisher, and it just exploded in fiery fashion. Hey right, guys, that's it for the build. Would love to know about your thoughts, including your questions and clarifications in a comment down below don't forget to hit that like button if you guys like the build it really lets me know that you guys are enjoying the series shout out to all the people subscribe and keep supporting the channel i really appreciate you guys for all of the amazing support and for all the people who have subscribed yet i hope you earn your subscriptions in the future but if you're in it today please don't hesitate to hit that subscribe button it really helps me out a lot if you want to support me directly please consider joining our d20 rollers club by hitting the join button as well as patreon finally that's it for me hope to see you soon on the next Masterbox Show. So, bye guys. <coughs>